Okay, everybody, um, this is the second to last video I have for you for review here in the blue packet. Um, and it is Key Concept 5.3. This is Nationalism, Revolution, and Reform. Um, and I'm just going to go through the, the stuff here for us. So here we go. So the Enlightenment is really kind of the backbone of this whole unit. It's these ideas that really get the ball rolling for the revolutions, but also for the rise of nationalism. Um, and it's really the rise and diffusion of Enlightenment thought that questioned the established traditions in all areas of life and often preceded the revolutions and rebellions against existing governments. Okay, uh, philosophers, this, there's, there's, you need to pick three philosophers. Um, remember when we did the cereal boxes there earlier in the year, um, if you have to talk about an Enlightenment philosopher, make sure you use the person that you researched because that's somebody you know about. Okay, um, and think back to that if it's something related to the, the Enlightenment. Um, the big one, probably the best other example is John Locke. Um, he is the really the guy who a lot of our system of government here in the United States is, come out, is based on his ideas. Um, he was from England. He wrote a book called The Two Treatises on Government. That's his most famous work. And he really pushed the ideas of natural rights. You know, all men are created equal, things like that. He said that power comes from the people and that people can overthrow governments that fail to protect their rights. Okay. The next one, who probably has the second greatest amount of influence on the United States, is Baron de Montesquieu, and he is from France. He wrote this treatise called The Spirit of Laws, um, where he talked about the need to separate power and to create checks and balances so that one person couldn't be all powerful. And this was obviously an indictment of the absolute monarchy in France under, uh, I believe, I think it's Louis the 14th is when he was a lot, uh, or 15th, um, when he did his most of his writing. And those two systems are, they're kind of the heart of the United States government, the idea of separating power between national and federal, or and, and state and local government, but also between the three branches, and then having checks between all those different branches of government. Okay. Jean-Jacques Rousseau is probably the one guy we don't know that well about, but he is, is one that usually becomes, uh, he's a favorite to, to come up on the test and stuff like that. And it's because of his idea called the social contract. And he kind of builds off of the ideas of Locke or complements the ideas of Locke with this idea that people make an implied contract with their government to protect their rights. Um, we, we agree to give up certain freedoms in exchange for safety and security. Okay, um, the big outcomes of these are the wars of independence and the French Revolution that take place in the back half of the 18th century and the early 19th century. American Revolution you know, adopts Locke's ideas of natural rights and that if a government violates the rights of people, they have the right and duty to alter that. That's what Jefferson was really talking about, is that the British government was violating the rights of the Americans, so it was their duty really to overthrow and place a government that would respect their rights. The French Declaration of Rights really takes that another step farther um, and takes those ideas of the American Revolution and to some extent the U.S. Constitution, along with those uh, ideas of the Enlightenment, and combines them all up into the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen, which says that all men are born free and equal. Um, it per tried to preserve natural rights, uh, puts in things like you can't be arrested without charge, because if you remember from our, our study of the French um, absolute monarchies, they could throw you in jail just because they didn't like you um, or you said something, and they never had to charge you. They just put you in jail forever. Though you never have a trial or anything. Uh, this really begins to come to the idea of the idea that you are innocent until proven guilty, um, and that people have the freedom of speech. Now they went on; the French went on to violate many of this during the Reign of Terror and stuff like that because they they didn't apply those policies to the people that they thought were the bad people, which were the wealthy of France. Um, and then you have Simone Boulevard's Jamaica letter, which I believe we read in class, um, was really about the rebellion against colonial rule. And he brings in a lot of enlightenment ideas also. Um, and the fact that um, there was, you know, a class, a very stringent class system in Latin America that Boulevard tried to break. Okay. Um, some other things that come out of this period uh, and, and from the Enlightenment are the expansion of what's called suffrage, which is voting. Okay, um, and it really all of these ideas come off of that idea, the, these idea of natural rights that all men are created equal. And when we say men, we're talking about all human beings are created equal. Uh, it was 
capitalized by the efforts of women to gain the vote in the United States and in Britain and France. Eventually that happens by the early 1920s. Um, all of the women are, are given the right to vote in all those countries. Um, the expansion of male voting, um, which took away the removal of property requirements because, you know, in 19, in seven, 1789, when the Constitution was promulgated, you had to own 50 acres of land to be able to vote. Um, that means you had to be pretty wealthy to be able to vote. And that, that is gradual, those, those requirements are gradually removed. And then you fight the Civil War and you have the expansion of voting rights to African American men um, in 1865. You have the backlash of the Jim Crow laws and all that. Uh, but the, the rule is still there. Um, abolition of slavery going hand in hand with the Civil War, again, coming from the idea that all men are created equal. And it wasn't just the abolition of slavery in the United States, but across the Americas and really kind of worldwide. And it begins really with the abolition of the slave trade uh, by stopping the importation of slaves. Gradually, slavery uh, becomes too onerous a system to go on and gradually countries throughout the Americas abolish it. Um, Russia didn't have really slavery, but they had serfdom. Um, and it took until the 1860s for that to be abolished and rights given to the peasants. Okay. Uh, beginning in the 18th century, people around the world developed, uh, de it, it kind of grows out of these ideas of the nationalism and especially the French Revolution. Um, these ideas that there's a commonality based on language, religion, social customs, and territory. Um, this is kind of the roots of nationalism. Um, and you begin to have these newly imagined um, national communities all over the world. <clears throat> and governments use this idea to unite people. Um, now, nationalism is simply the identification of one's own nation with one's own nation and supports for its in interests and often to the exclusion or detriment of the interests of other nations. Okay, and when we're talking about nations, we're not just talking about countries with border. We're often talking about large ethnic groups uh, that come together as a nation. Okay, some examples of nationalism: um, Germany, um, where you had Germany prior to the unification was about 300 individual states. Um, the pride rises up after Napoleon, as we did in one of our DBQs last week, um, and eventually it's led. They're led to unification by the Prussians under von under Bismarck in 1871. Italy, same kind of ideal applies there. This idea to push for a third Rome to unify Italy uh, based on the shared heritage of Rome and its roots in Western civilization. Uh, there have been many attempts to unify Italy, but eventually it succeeds in 1871 under Cavour and Gibaldi and Mazzini. Philippines, um, there's a, a big push of nationalism against the Spanish, uh, beginning in the 1700s as the Spanish Empire begins to weaken, culminates in a revolution in 1896 uh, that unfortunately um, happens just shortly before the Spanish-American War, which the Americans take possession of the USA, and we hold the Philippines until the end of World War II um, when it, is, it gains independence. Argentina um, had some nationalism um, and independence in the wars of the Spanish, um, led by Jose de San Martin. Um, he kind of comes after Bolivar, and he leads their expansion into Patagonia in the 1880s. Okay. Um, some other examples of nationalism. You have the Maori, who are the native tribe of New Zealand, pushing back against British um, land grabs, really, and the attempt to establish British um, sovereignty there. Um, and in many cases, they confiscated the land. Eventually, they give some of it back, but you still have this uh, bad feeling there. Uh, Puerto Rico, you have a woman named Lola Rodriguez de Tio, who is a crusader for women's rights and the abolition of slavery, but also the independence of Puerto Rico. Um, and you lead to a Puerto Rican national movement. Puerto Rico is still not independent. It is a U.S. territory, though there's uh, some people, about half the Puerto Ricans would like to be uh, independent. The other half want to become a U.S. state. So there's a, a, tor a tear there. The Balkan nationalism in the in the southwestern, I'm sorry, southeastern Europe is a, it's, and I talked about this in the last video, to push to overthrow the dominance of the Austrians and the Ottomans. Uh, they do gain temporary independence uh, prior to World War II, most of the countries, uh, but after World War II, they're dominated by the USSR, the Soviet Union, until 1989. They are now self-governing, but not without a lot of problems. They were uh, several wars where there was atrocities committed um, and even to the level of genocide in the area of Bosnia. And then you had Ottomanism, 
which was a nationalist movement that grew up in the Ottoman Empire. Um, and the idea was that uh, everybody was a citizen of the Ottoman Empire and therefore should all be equal before the law, regardless of religion. It was an idea. The idea was to break down those barriers that separated Muslims from Christians and Jews and other religions. Um, this lead to what the Tanzimat reforms, which I talked about in the early one of the earlier videos. Um, eventually, at the end of the 19th century, you have the rise of the Young Turk movement, pushing for more control and more of an Ottoman Turkish Empire or a Turkish Ottoman Empire. Eventually, it leads to the collapse of the empire in the aftermath of World War I and the creation of modern Turkey under Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. Okay, uh, just some quick cause and effect on the revolutions. Um, American Revolution, you have the French and Indian Wars and the, 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 the debt that grows out of that that really leads to the whole taxation issue. And the taxation issue, remember, it wasn't so much the amount of the taxes and everything else. It was that they had no input in those taxes eventually will lead to the Declaration of Independence and the formation of the United States. Haiti begins as really a slave revolt, but there's also the underlying current that you have a lot of free blacks in Haiti who are treated second-class citizen by the free by the whites. And um, they really lead right up. And Haiti is a very violent revolution. Um, they eventually become independent and become the first African-run uh, government of the Americas. Okay. Latin American independence movements really grew out of the social hierarchy that favored the European born and to some extent their descendants. Um, and it's the spark is when Napoleon takes over Spain and Portugal and puts his brother on the throne. The people of Latin America say, no, thank you. And they uprise. And there's really this, there's nothing the Spanish authorities can do about it. Uh, so they gain independence all over Latin America and Brazil. Um, and then you have the French Revolution, which is really the most violent of all of these. It grows out of an economic depression that came from government debt. Um, there was high taxes on the third estate, the, the middle class and the lower classes, and just a, a huge climate of inequality. Leads to the overthrow of the monarchy, the reign of terror, and the execution of the king, uh, followed by the rise of Napoleon and the Napoleonic Wars, and then eventually when Napoleon is defeated, um, the setup of a constitutional monarchy in France. Okay, um, You have in the Americas, and not just the United States, you have um, a growing climate of slave resistance to many of these things. In a lot of cases, they were you had societies that grew up of freed slaves and sometimes escaped slaves. And the, the most famous of these are the Maroon Societies. Uh, these are des descendants of Africans in the Americans who formed settlements away from slavery. Okay, some were escapees, many were free slaves. Um, they often mixed with the indigenous populations, the Native Americans, um, and they often developed their own language. In some cases, there was syncretism of religion also um, in there, and this becomes the languages are often referred to as referred to as Creole languages. Okay, um, elsewhere around the world, you have pushback against this European imperialism and this European push everywhere. Um, the, one of the most famous of these at the end of the 19th century is the Boxer Rebellion, um, which was a, a pushback against European imperialism in China, but also against Christian attempts to evangelize China and, and convert the Chinese to Christianity. It's a very violent rebellion. It is uh, There's a, a very violent crackdown from European troops. Many of the European countries, including the United States, send in troops to crush this rebellion. Eventually, it will lead to the collapse of the the Qing Dynasty, and then civil war in China, and the communists take over in the middle of the 20th century. Okay, um, some rebellions were from diverse religious ideas. Again, this is a good time to stop the video and make sure you get this down. You had the ghost dance in the U.S. This was a, um, a kind of a religious revival um, in the among the Native Americans, especially those in the Upper Midwest, um, the Lakota and 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 the Sioux and and others. Um, and it was the idea was it was an uh, it was it came out of a prophecy to end white expansion. Um, the United States had passed a law requiring uh, Native Americans to assimilate into the culture, um, and eventually these rebellions were crushed by the U.S. military. Another example of of these religious ideas was one that's called the Azosa um, cattle killing movement in Southern Africa. Um, this there was a prophecy that was made by this little girl that claimed that the Azosa, if they killed all of their cattle, 
Um, the spirits of the dead would return and expel the whites from South Africa, and then in turn would bring cattle to replace the dead ones. So they do it. They follow the prophecy. Sadly, nothing happens um, except for people starving because they've killed off you know, 400,000 cattle. Uh, so they cut back their food supply so dramatically that as many as 40,000 Africans died. Another one of these takes place in northern Africa, in Sudan, which is just to the south of Egypt, um, where you have an Islamic revolt led by the Mahdi or the guided one. Um, and um, eventually this one is crushed by the British, uh, a combination of British and Egyptian armies, um, and it leads to kind of a combination of Egypt and Sudan under British rule. Okay, uh, the global spread of political and social thought um, leads to an increasing number of rebellions stimulated by transnational ideologies and solidarities. Discontent with monarchists and imperial rule encourages the development of political ideologies. So uh, these are liberalism, socialism, communism, and Marxism. So we're just going to run through those um, real quickly. Um, so liberalism, this one you have written down, um, really comes off of those ideas of John Locke. This is the type of government that emerges in the United States and in a lot of Western Europe eventually. Okay, socialism um, is kind of the earliest uh one of these things that comes out and this really um talks more about it's it's a response to this to the the evils or the ills of the industrial revolution um that you have to have some government ownership and control of these maybe some central planning of the economy um, government ownership uh, of the means of production and a whole lot of regulation on business um, a more extreme view of socialism is Marxism, um, and Marx saw everything in terms of class and class struggle, um, and his theory was that workers would rise up and take control of the means of production, leading to a classless society, um, a so-called workers' paradise, and that grows into the idea of communism, which communism was attempted in the Soviet Union um, as part of the Russian Revolution, as you see the proponents here are Marx and Lenin. It's supposed to create this classless, stateless society um, with common ownership of property all the people own it uh, so it's to end the exploitation of workers and create this workers paradise wonderful idea never really came to fruition anywhere um, because it's really kind of a utopian version okay and then finally you had the push for women's rights that continues today um, and the three big things that came out of that in the in the late 18th and early 19th century. Mary Wollstonecraft writes her Vindication of Rights of Women. Um, Olympe de Gauche kind of makes a, a mirror to the rights of man um, with her rights of the woman uh, and the citizen. And then in the United States, you have the Seneca Falls Convention that takes place in 1848. All of these pushed for women's equality. Um, on there. So that leaves us with one more video to go, um, which I will get to everybody soon.